November 9, 1967. Finally, after more than half a decade of technological achievement, the Saturn V was poised for its first unmanned all-up test. The flight would be known as Apollo 4. Apollo 4 was a tense time because those of us who were working on the individual stages were not sure that if we didn't do the individual stage tests at the time, something might go wrong. Testing to date had been successful, and so we had reason to believe that everything would work. But always there's a little something that happens you never know about. I looked at it and I remember thinking, you know, my God, we've done this. We've gotten it built and we've got one ready to fly. It's probably got a million pieces in it and they all got to work at the same time. Liquid hydrogen tank in the second stage now pressurizing. T minus 60 seconds and counting. T minus 60. I was in awe of what was going on because I realized that not only was my F1 engine so important, but so many other systems went through that so same sort of experience. They all had their major unknowns, they all had their teams that had to do their jobs perfectly, or that vehicle would not work. T minus 50 seconds and counting, we have transferred to wind power, internal power. The transfer is satisfactory. The As it comes up to ignition point, you're trying to run over in your mind all the things that you thought might need checking. Again, you know, you, well, I think this is okay, and yeah, it, it has to be. We checked it so many times. We knew the countdown was going down. We knew a time that it was supposed to launch. We were all just transfixed on the launch pad. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. Five, four, we have ignition. All engines are running. We have liftoff. We have liftoff at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The tower has been cleared. The tower has been cleared. You see it move off very slowly. Oh, what's wrong? It's never gonna go. Come on, go, 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 go. You wanna coax it, you know, get, get off of there. I say, my God, that's, you know, thousands of tons and it's moving so slow you think it's gonna fall over. Shock wave is progressing across the water, coming towards you. It's pretty impressive, you know? I had never felt this much power and energy from that distance. We were going like, we, the ground was shaking like an earthquake in California. It was absolutely incredible. You thought that you were going to be knocked over with the power of that. I did hear women saying, oh, 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 ooh, ah, and then clapping. It was the dawn of a new era in spaceflight. With five engines guzzling 15 tons of fuel a second to generate 160 million horsepower, the 6.1 million pound Saturn rocket soared skyward. I was, you know, so nervous when it finally the ignition was on the first stage took off and it fired properly and that was wonderful. And then all I'm worried about is what are we gonna do after the first stage burns out? Is ours gonna start? So we're watching the data, and we're watching the data, and we're watching the data. I don't think I breathed for eight and a half minutes. We drop the interstage, which is pretty neat, and we ignite the J2 engines, and they all come up to thrust. And we say, it's working, it's working, it's working. Phew. And that's what we thought, phew. <laughs> and we ran out of fuel, and the fuel cutoff sensor said, we're out of gas. And then the S4B ignited and it took off. And to me, that, that was all over by that time. <laughs> My part was done. 
Apollo 4 had been a near perfect flight. Suddenly, the president's goal seemed much closer. <laughs> 